lateral one third, the upper surface of the lateral one third of the clavicle. So since it inserts into the scapula as well as into the clavicle, the, it depends on which fibers contract. So lower fibers contract, it depresses the shoulder joint. Upper fibers contract, it elevates the shoulder joint. All the fibers together contract, it retracts the scapula. Shoulder joint goes backward. The entire joint goes backward, not the humerus. Entire joint goes backward. Right. Latismus dorsi takes origin from the level of T6, from spinous processes of T6 all the way. So you can see palpate here, these are the spinous processes here, all the way down till the spin uh, spinous process of L4, till L3 or L4 sometimes. And uh, also the uh, posterior uh, part of the iliac crest, posterior superior iliac spine, and uh, it goes, goes around like this. This is the whole extent of the latissimus dorsi. See, this whole thing. Okay, it's a very thin sheet of muscle. Now, and get a, this gets inserted into the anterior aspect. The ligament passes anteriorly. See, it comes like this, passes anteriorly, gets inserted into the anterior medial aspect of the humerus, just below the uh, surgical neck of the humerus. So, when this muscle contracts, actually, unlike what people think, it brings about medial rotation, medial rotation and abduction, and uh, adduction, not abduction. Though the muscle is a posterior muscle, because post it's a posterior muscle, most people think it will bring about adduction, abduction, not adduction. But this muscle, since the tendon passes anteriorly like this, when it pulls, it actually brings about adduction and medial rotation. So it acts in tandem with the pectoralis major muscle. Pectoralis major and the lattice must also act together. So this is what is essential for climbing. Like when you're climbing a wall or climbing a ladder, you're pulling your body weight up. Now here, anterior group of muscles, that is pectoralis major here, latissimus dorsi posteriorly, together they act on the humerus. That is why the humerus is able to exert such a force that it is able to pull the body up. If it was only pectoralis major acting alone, it would not be able to pull the body weight up. But with the lats acting along with it, it has the capacity to pull the body weight up. Okay. So because you can see, it's actually though it is, this is the largest muscle in terms of surface area in the body. But it is not the thickest muscle. Though it, uh, the number of fibers contained in this muscle are quite less. They are very few in number. Since the number of fibers is very few because the muscle is a very thin muscle, it is not a very powerful muscle unless it is built or developed specially. Which you can see in bodybuilders, they have like a lat like yes, this. Yes. It's called the wings. It's called wings actually. So where, where the lats go like this, it will be like this actually. And bodybuilders when they do like this, you can see here. Like yes. this, right? Yes. So yes. that is called. Uh, no, I don't think he's got that much of lats. <laughs> you, you do? Show, show. Lats? Show, show, show. Remove the shirt. If the lats are built, uh, no, because most bodybuilders don't build lats. Lat building is very difficult, actually. You have to actually do this. Yeah. You know, it, uh, you have to pull weights from yeah. behind yeah. your neck. Yeah. From yeah. behind your neck, you pull like this. This is how you build the lat, lats muscle. So lat building is not so easy. So most bodybuilders tend to avoid it if they are yeah. amateurs. Only professionals do that. So put together, basically, the latissimus torsi is along, acting along with the pectoralis major. This has the capacity to even pull the entire weight of the body against yeah. gravity. But this is not the largest muscle in the body. If you are asked to uh, name the largest muscle in the body, it is gluteus maximus. Gluteus maximus alone has a lo lot more fibers packed into a small space than the latissimus dorsi. Though in terms of surface area, this is such a large muscle, in terms of uh, uh, power, in terms of strength, the gluteus maximus is a far more stronger muscle, much stronger than the latissimus dorsi. So these are the superficial group of muscles. Under this, again, you have another next group of muscles, that is the muscles of the pectoral girdle, which lie on either side, right? So you have supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres major, teres minor, rhomboid, the major rhomboid minor, subscapularis. All of these muscles lie here. Then you have the levator scapula here. So all of these muscles are the second layer. You remove all of these, third layer of muscles. So third layer of muscles are the muscles of the, the medial side, medial as aspect, muscles of the lateral aspect. Muscles of the lateral aspect are intercostal muscles. Muscles of the medial aspect are the erector spinal group of muscles. So erector spinal group of muscles again have three layers in them. So that you'll study about when we go do the muscles of the back separately, you'll be studying about the erector spinal group of muscles. These are very powerful muscles of the body. But they're individually small muscles. But they, when they act together, uh, together when they act, they have the capacity to actually produce very, very strong movements of the body. Understood? Yes. What now supply to lattice moves, Dorsey? Hmm? Uh,
<coughs> what is the nerve supply? <coughs> nerve to latissimus dorsi. There is a separate nerve for latissimus dorsi, isn't it? Come yes. from the brachial plexus. Yes. Nerve to latissimus dorsi. What, what is it otherwise called? Dorsal scapular nerve. Dorsal scapular nerve is otherwise known as the nerve to latissimus dorsi. Trapezius. Nerve supply to trapezius. C3C4. Hmm? C3C4. Ventral primary rami. The, the trapezius receives uh, nerve supply from uh, no, from cervical plexus as well as ventral ventral primary rami mm -hmm. of uh, the cervical no, cervical plexus of nerves itself, which branch together to give off a nerve to trapezius. That is the nerve supply to the trapezius muscle. Okay. Okay. Right. Close. So what are the of, uh, Close up. Back up. Back up. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Nucal ligament. Nucal. Nucal. But remember, nucal ligament extends only till the thoracic vertebra. Below thoracic vertebra, there are no nucal ligaments. Only till thoracic vertebra, the spines of the vertebrae, uh, vertebral column are connected by a piece of ligaments. From the upper, upper spine uh, to the lower spine, there is one ligament. Then upper spine to lower spine, another ligament. Put together, all of them put together is what is known as the nucal ligament. Sir, origination of trapezius from the, from, uh, the uh, external occipital protuberance, superior nucal line, nucal ligament, all the way till the uh, uh, till the level of T6. Yeah. And the not T6 till the level of T12. It goes down till here till the level of T12. And this is from L from L8 to T. Uh, Starts from the level of T6 all the way till L3 or L4. Uh, Okay. <laughs> 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 <laughs>